All right, so I ended up splitting the video into two parts. Part A has that introduction to grease waste, the overview of grease waste requirements, and the first part of creating the piping family, which includes how to create the reference planes and how to define the parameters associated to that geometry. Then on part B, you're gonna learn how to create the extrusions and how to add piping connectors. And then we will be importing that new family into a project. So if you're watching part B, make sure that you have already watched part A so that you can follow the flow. So we're all set with all our planes, our reference planes. Now we're ready to, do, to make our extrusion and create our little box. So for that, let's go back to our reference um, level here. Let's do a little overview on what we want to do here. So we're going to create an extrusion that's going to be a rectangle with a height. Okay. And for that, we want to make sure that our faces remain attached to our reference planes. Okay. So for that, let's go into our create panel. I create a ribbon we go on to extrusion and then since we want this to be locked to our faces we want to make sure we click here to pick lines and then we lock that right so I'm gonna pick this line this line this line and this line and now notice how they're locked by default because I click here on the lock thing and uh, actually I'm, I'm, I'm picking reference planes, but what I'm creating is this lines so that I can trim them. I'm doing TR here. You click on the lines that you wanna keep. So I wanna keep this, I wanna keep this, and I wanna keep this. So we have our base already. So we're done with our profile, what's gonna be extruded. So let's click here and finish edit mode. Notice that by default, my extrusion is selected and it has an extrusion end of one foot, right? So don't get confused because now when I go to 3D view, you'll see that my little box has a height of, of one foot because that's the extrusion end, but I haven't constrained it to my top uh, plane. So, for example, is my let's go to a front view one second, and then our height, uh, just by coincidence, it was one foot, but let, let's change it here to be say two feet. So it's a perfect cube, right? So this is not constrained to the top yet. I have to do that. So I'll do that right away. So I hit align A L. You hit on the plane to which you want to align it to, you hit on the top face of your, uh, your extrusion, and now you wanna make sure that it locks to it. So that way, if in the future you change, you know what, let me do that a uh, little example here so you see how everything's flexing very nicely. Let me change this to wireframe so you can see and angle it a little bit. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this to my other monitor, but I'm gonna change the height to let's say one, and then the length to six, and the width to three, right? So I do one for the height, I'm doing a six for the length, and for the width, I'll have three feet. And then when I click okay, you'll see how everything changed. Okay, now we're just missing our extrusion for the pipe connector and then add our connectors. And if you're serious about learning Revit MEP, go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com. Over there we offer professional training and coaching for Autodesk products like Revit, AutoCAD MEP. We also offer courses in fire protection systems, plumbing systems, and HVAC. Actually, we have our dimensions already, so why not use them? So this is gonna, the height's gonna be about 32 inches. I'm gonna take all this to, to the other monitor and I'm gonna input this, all right? So we had for height approximately 32 inches 
and then for our length so in this case this is referring to the 24 inch dimension and then this would be 20. And it looks a little weird just because we're not used to the image. The image is a little bit distorted in the website. So what I need to do now is to add that pipe connector there, right? And we know that the pipe size for that connector is three inches. It's right here. So let's add that. For that, we're going to go to our front view. And then remember, this was that that plane for the inlet and outlet. But we haven't defined a, a parameter that drives the height of that connector. So let's do it now. So we'll go here to dimension. We go from, by the way, the first pick that you do is the strong reference is what you want to keep it not moving. And then the second point that you pick is the object that you want to flex, that you want to move with. So again, we go from strong to soft dimension, and then you click outside. Now let's define another parameter here. And we're gonna call this outlet height or outlet elevation, right? And then to that parameter, let's associate to that outlet elevation. Right now we have uh, nine inches. It, I mean, what you would do is create different types depending on your gallons and then assign the correct outlet elevation. But for now, let's keep it as flexible as possible. Let's just say that this is 75% of that height. And then when I click OK, notice that by default, the, the initial value was nine inches. When I click OK, this gets converted to two feet because the height was two feet eight inches so 75 percent of that is two feet so this would be my connector right here so remember we want one pipe connector here on the front plane and one pipe connector here on the back plane so it would be the inlet and the outlet and they don't necessarily have to be in the same elevation you could define two different reference planes, one for the inlet and one for the outlet, but for now let's keep it the same. Okay, so let's go to our front view and now we go into uh, create extrusion. We want to select this um, circle here, right? And for the radius, we're going to select one and a half inches because we know the diameter is three inches. And then we want to select our reference plane here. Our set plane is going to be, see, uh, front back was the one right in the middle, right? We want to go to front. And then let's go OK. And what I want is this one here. I'm going to place it here. And this is key. If I click on my circle by default, I cannot see the center mark and that's very annoying. So what you want to do is click on it and make it visible. And just so that you see that it does matter, I'm going to take it out of alignment so that you can do a line from here to here. You make sure you lock it and then you do from here to here and you make sure you lock it. That way, that way you ensure that your connector is align with the intersection of both planes. So for the extrusion end, we don't need one foot. We will we want probably something like one inch. And let's do okay. And it seems like it's looking good. Let's take a look at our 3D view. Yep, that's pretty good. So let's do something similar on the back. So let's go to our back plane. Let's go create extrusion. You set your back plane. You're going to select the circle, your radius, one and a half. That's pretty good. I'm going to place it here just so I don't get confused. 
and then remember to click on the circle and make sure you make the center mark visible so you're able to align it in this direction and in this direction we lock it again the extrusion and now by default is pretty good which is one inch let's click OK and let's take a look at what we have notice that this extrusion here if I go to the plan view see this extrusion came in the right way this one didn't so I can simply select my my uh, extrusion and instead of having extrusion on this direction to one inch I can do minus one inch and then it will go in the other direction and now if we take a look at our 3d view it's looking pretty good so so we can now add a, a material that says steel actually that's what it is right yep here it is fabricated steel select all our geometry and here under material click in here and then in a minute I can do a search and say steel and we don't really care too much we're engineers so let's just click stainless steel so let's say stainless steel 304 you click here add material to document and then with this selected which you can click OK and now you were to do a realistic view that's supposed to be stainless steel I like to keep it under shaded and it performs a little bit better uh, so now our last thing would be to add the connectors inlet and outlet now what we want is that if you change the diameter of this pipe then the the extrusion we want it to change with the pipe diameter right we wouldn't want an inlet of three inches if you have an incoming pipe of four inches and then the whole three inches right that doesn't make sense so, so in order to do that you want to click on your extrusion say edit extrusion then let's create a diameter dimension here let's click on our dimension and we want to create a parameter here that is going to be called pipe size and now we can come here and finish it and we do the same thing for this guy so we go edit extrusion we add our dimension then we make sure we associate that with the parameter we already created which is pipe size then we go back because remember it took us here to dimension so don't get lost just go back here and then click OK and now if I go here to my parameters and I change that uh, where is it pipe size let's change that pipe size to six inches I'm going to take it to the other side and click OK then my diameters would change so we're good to go now we just need to add the, the connectors so for that I'm going to come here and to create I'm going to come here to pipe connector and then I'm going to click see how I have face activated so I come here this is huge so all you do is you click here and you change your you could change your diameter to three inches here right you could do that but instead of doing that what you want to do is associate that with your actual pipe size and that way they're linked together okay a flow configuration we're, we're gonna keep it we're gonna talk about that um, probably in another video this takes a long time a flow direction let's set it as in let's say this is the inlet uh, this doesn't apply for system classification let's just keep it under sanitary since this is going to be a grease interceptor and let's keep flow like that so eventually we can read it uh, I'll show you how to do that in another video uh, so for now let's just add the other uh, pipe connector which would be the outlet 
So we come here to create pipe connector. We click here, click here, associate with the pipe size. We say we were going to keep it calculated. This is going to be the outlet. We say that the system classification was going to be sanitary. This is very important. If you have this, the wrong system classification, you will not be able to connect to your pipe systems. Okay. Um, and that's it. So let's just run a little test here. I'm going to create a new project. So that's my new project and now I can come here and simply say load into project and then I have my project here. Let's test it out. I have my three inch pipe going out. Notice that my family turns green because it has been associated with my system. So I have my inlet on my outlet and I can go to a 3D view and change my detail level to fine and there we go. And as always if you enjoyed the video make sure you smash that like button down there, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.